Okay, for lesson 17, we're going to be comparing tape diagram solutions to algebraic solutions. So for these, you're going to be drawing a picture as well as solving an algebraic equation. All right, so there are seven scenarios for this um, example. You're going to take notes on five of them uh, on your worksheet. And then you'll be asked to do the sixth and seventh scenario and bring them to class. Uh, there are some additional notes after um, scenario six and seven. All right, so here is example one. We have John and Ag are summarizing some of their expenses for the family vacation for themselves and their three children. And we're going to create a model to show how much each item will cost using all the given information and then answer the questions that follow. All right, so here's the first scenario. Uh, you don't have any of these in your packet, so you're going to have to kind of uh, summarize these or paraphrase them in your own words. So in this case, uh, one rainy day, they, the family decide to go watch a matinee movie in the morning and a drive-in movie in the evening. The price of the matinee movie in the morning is different than the cost of the drive-in movie. The tickets for the matinee morning movie cost $6 each. So how much did each person spend that day on movie tickets if the ticket cost for each family member was the same? And what was the cost for a ticket for the drive-in movie in the evening? So let's go ahead and take a look at what a tape diagram of this problem would look like. First of all, we have all five um, people involved. And we know that they spent $6 for one of the movies. Um, and then we don't know how much they spent for the last uh, the last movie in the evening. So that's going to be called E. We know that in total they spent $75 for both movies. So in that case we know we have five E's, five tickets for the evening matinee. So that is represented by five E or five times E. And we also know that we have five tickets that cost six dollars. So five times six is thirty. So if that's the case, we know we can take $30 away from the $75 total, and that's going to leave us with $45. And then because we know we have five tickets that we don't know the price of, we're going to take 45, divide it by 5, and get 9. So our tickets are $9 each. So let's take a look at an algebraic equation and solution. So again, we know the morning matinee movie was $6 each. And we are going to designate E for the evening drive-in movie, which we don't know the price of. So in this case, we know we've got five times the quantity of E plus six, or the evening ticket plus the morning ticket. And somehow that's all going to add up to $75. So if that's the case, using distributive property, five times E gives us five times E. And 5 times 6 gives us 30. And if you notice, it's similar to what we have going on right here. So now, if that's the case, how am I going to isolate E to find out how much E represents? Well, here we're going to use our properties of equality. If I take $30 away from this side of the equation, and I need to balance the equation by taking $30 away from the right-hand side of the equation. So now we can write this as 5e plus 30 minus 30 equals 75 minus 30. And because of this, this gives us our zero. We can make zero by taking 30 away from a positive 30. So now we have 5e plus zero, and by simplifying the right-hand side, 75 minus 30 is 45, which kind of mirrors what we're doing over here also. So now we want to know what E is. Well, if 5 times E is representing multiplication, we want to know how many 1 E is. So how do I get rid of the 5? Well, we multiply by the reciprocal. This is called the multiplicative inverse. So we're going to take 5, multiply it by 1 fifth, and if we do that here, then we have to do it on the other side because of our equality. 
So 5 times 1 fifth gives us 1 e and 1 fifth times 45 gives us 9. Well, that means that one E ticket is going to be $9. So E is equal to 9. There's another way we can do this. So let's go back to the original equation. We can start off by taking the multiplicative inverse of 5 and multiplying 1 fifth. And doing the same thing with 75. So 1 fifth is 75. When you do that, that's going to create 1, which leaves us with just our quantity e plus 6. And then 1 fifth of 75 is 15. Now to isolate e, we go ahead and if we have plus 6, we're going to subtract 6 from both sides. And that gives us e equals 9. So in any case, the total each person spent on movie tickets in one day was $15 because 9 plus 6 is 15, but that the evening drive-in movie costs $9 each. All right, so let's take a look at scenario two. For dinner, the family went to a local pizza parlor, and the cost of the soda was $3. If each member of the family had a soda and one slice of pizza, how much did one slice of pizza cost? So again, let's do the tape diagram first. Well, we have five people in our family, and they each had a soda, and they each had a piece of pizza, which we're going to represent with P. And the total that they spent, based on our original information, was $37.95. So again, we have five times three. One, two, three, four, five. That's going to equal 15. And then we have five slices of pizza, which is represented by 5p. So if we know that our total is $37.95, we can take the $15 away, and that leaves us with $22.95. And then we divide that by the number of pieces of pizza, and that gives us $4.59 for each slice. So let's go ahead and turn this into algebra. One soda, again, is $3. And a slice of pizza is P dollars, which we don't know how much it's going to be. But because we have five people who spent the same amount, it's going to be five times the quantity of P plus three, and that total is going to be $37.95. So using our distributive property, five times P is 5P, and five times three is 15, which again mirrors what we did in our tape diagram. Now, in order to isolate the variable, we want to start by creating zero here or making zero. So if plus 15 can be zeroed out by subtracting 15, and we do the same thing for both sides. So that leaves us with 5p plus zero equals 2295. Again, that mirrors what we did over here on a tight tape diagram. Then we have to make 1 out of our multiplication problem. So 5 times p, we want to find out what 1p is. So the reciprocal of 5 is 1 fifth. So if we multiply 5 by 1 fifth, we get 1. And if we multiply 22.95 by 1 fifth, we're going to get $4.59. So one piece of pizza is equal to $4.59. So if we do this the other way and do our mul multiplicative identity first, then that means we're going to multiply both sides by one-fifth, which then leaves us with P plus 3, and then one-fifth of 3795 is 759. Then again, we make 0 by, instead of adding 3, we take 3 away, which means we're going to take 3 away from the other side, and P is equal to $4.59. So one slice of pizza costs $4.59. All right, let's take a look at scenario three. One night, John, Louie, and Bonnie went to see a local baseball game. They bought a ticket 
to the game and a hat that cost ten dollars each, how much was each ticket to enter the ballpark? So again, you should have an idea about the tape diagram since there was only three people. They had a ticket plus a hat and it total was a hundred and three dollars and eighty three cents. So that'd be three times ten is thirty. Subtract the thirty dollars from a hundred and three dollars and eighty three cents. That leaves you with seventy three eighty three and divide that by three you get twenty four sixty one. So then for the algebraic solution the ticket will be t dollars, the hat ten, and we have three times the quantity of t plus ten equals one hundred and three dollars and eighty three cents. Using our distributive property we end up with three t plus thirty and by subtracting thirty dollars from each side we get three t equals seventy three dollars and eighty three cents. Then by taking one third of that from each side one t is twenty four dollars and sixty one cents which matches our tape diagram. And again if you want to do it the other way by taking one third of each side you would end up with t plus ten is thirty four sixty one and then subtracting ten from each side gives us twenty four sixty one. So therefore one ticket cost twenty four dollars and sixty one cents. All right for scenario four John, Louie, and Bonnie went to see the baseball game and Ag and Missy went shopping. They bought a t-shirt for each member of the family and bought two pairs of sandals that cost ten dollars each. So how much was each t-shirt? So again here's our t-shirt. They bought one for each member of the family so that would be one t-shirt for John, Ag, Missy, Louie, and Bonnie and then they bought two pairs of sandals. So again we have two times ten is twenty. Take that twenty dollars away from a hundred and twenty and then take a hundred divided by five and each t-shirt costs twenty dollars. To do an algebraic solution we have t-shirts for t dollars. Two times ten is twenty dollars for the sandals. So it'd be five t plus twenty equals hundred and twenty. Going ahead and making zero to cancel out our addition, we end up with 5t equals 100, and 1 fifth t equals 100 times 1 fifth, and that means t equals 20. All right, last scenario before you're on your own. The family is going to fly on an airplane to their vacation destination. Each person needs to have their own ticket and also pay $25 in insurance fee per person. What is the cost of one ticket? So again, the tape diagram is a ticket plus twenty-five dollars. So we have five times twenty-five equals one hundred and twenty-five. Then eight seventy-five minus that one hundred and twenty-five dollars is seven fifty, and seven fifty divided by five is one hundred and fifty. If we're going to do it algebraically, t dollars. The insurance is twenty-five per person. So five times the quantity of t plus twenty-five. Go ahead and zero out our addition. So we're using our identity property. So five t equals seven fifty, and then one fifth. Somehow we lost the one fifth here. One fifth of five, and seven fifty times one fifth is one hundred and fifty. Or doing the same thing here, starting with the multiplication first we end up with t equals one hundred and fifty dollars. Alright, for here are scenarios six and seven. You're going to have to copy these down. So on vacation, family rented a car to see all the places they wanted to go for five days. The car costs a certain amount each day plus a one-time insurance fee of fifty dollars. How much was the daily cost of the car? And scenario seven, the family decide to stay in a motel for four nights. The motel charges a nightly fee plus sixty dollars in state taxes. What is the nightly charge with no taxes included? So do that, you're gonna have to stop the video, prepare those two scenarios. Make sure you do algebra or the algebraic equation and the tape diagram, and we'll look at those in class. When you're done with that, go ahead and continue the video. 
All right, so we're going to summarize using the table. We're going to summarize our findings in the table on the lesson worksheet. You're going to continue the video when you have completed the table. All right, so your table is complete, and it should look like this. So after collaborating with all the groups, summarize the findings list listed below. Cost of an e evening movie, one slice of pizza, cost of admission to a baseball game, cost of a t-shirt, cost of an airplane ticket, the daily cost of the car rental is $70, and the nightly charge for the motel is $85. So using all of these results, determine the cost of a slice of pizza, a plane ticket, two nights in a motel, and one evening movie. So adding those all up, you should have $333.59. And for the second one, one t-shirt, one ticket to the baseball game, and one rental, car rental, would be $114.61. All right, so let's take a look at our discussion. Remember any of these notes you might want to write down in your math journal. So it's very important to understand the process of undoing addition and multiplication to get zeros and ones. Using the additive inverse undoes addition to get zero, and multiplicative inverse undoes multiplication by a non-zero number to get one. So in solving an equation with parentheses, the order of operations must be followed. So what property can be used to eliminate the parentheses? For example, in 3 times the quantity of a plus b is equal to 3a plus 3b. Well, that would be the distributive property. So in order to get rid of parentheses, you have to use a distributive property. So another approach to solving the problem is to eliminate the coefficient first. So how would one go about eliminating the coefficient? In this case, how would we get rid of the 3 without using distributive property? Well, you can multiply both sides by the reciprocal of the coefficient, or which is the same thing as dividing both sides by the coefficient. So how do we undo multiplication? Well, we can multiply by the reciprocal of the coefficient of the variable. What is the result when undoing multiplication in any problem? Well, when we undo multiplication, the result will always be 1, which is the multiplicative identity. And what mathematical property is being applied when undoing multipli multiplication? We call that the multiplicative inverse. So what approach must be taken when solving a variable in an equation and undoing addition is required? Well, to undo addition, we need to subtract the constant. So how can this approach be shown with a tape diagram? Well, let's take a look. If we have 3 times t plus 30 equals 96, how do I get rid of the plus 30? Well, if 3 times 10, and then we have 3 t's here, that would be 30. If we take that away, we end up with 66, because if you cross this off, we're essentially subtracting 30 from 96 to get 66, and that leaves us with our 3 t's. So here's our 3 t's, which equals 66. And what is the result of undoing addition in any problem? The result will always be 0, which is the additive identity. Because what happens when we add 0 to anything? It still stays the same. So what ma mathematical property is being applied when undoing addition? And the name of that is the additive inverse. Because the inverse of addition is subtraction. What mathematical property allows us to perform an operation or do the same thing on both sides of the equation? The key word being equation. What other word has the same, the same meaning as equation? Well, that would be equality. So addition and multiplication properties of equality. So how are the addition and multiplication properties of equality applied? 
Well, the problem is an equation which means that A equals B. If a number is added or multiplied to both sides, then the resulting sum or product is equal to each other. So if I have 1 plus 4 is equal to 2 plus 3, if I add another number to both sides or multiply by a number to both sides of those expressions, I'm going to end up with equaling values the same. All right, take a look at exercise 1. Go ahead and complete that and check your answer by continuing the video. Make sure you show both an algebraic solution and a model. All right, let's go ahead and check your answer. So here's a tape diagram. We have some amount of hours we don't know. We have to keep kind of guessing and checking. We know the first hour is 10, but we want to know how many hours it's going to take to get up to 58. Well, so we try it once with two 12s. A 10 and two 12s is 34. That's not enough. We need 58. A 10 and 3 twelves is 46, which is still not enough. We need 58. And a 10 and 4 twelves gives us 58. So 58 minus 10 is 48. And 48 divided by 12 is 4. So we know that the number of twelves we need is 4. So as an algebraic solution, our first hour is 10. And we want to know how many hours it's going to take at 12 to get 58. So, turning this around, 12h plus 10, because of commutative property of addition, equals 58. Now we want to take 10 and turn it to 0, so we subtract 10 using our additive identity, or additive inverse. So, if we do that, then 58 minus 10 is 48. And now we want to use our multiplicative inverse. If it's 12 times h, we want to multiply by 1 12th, which means 48 is multiplied by 1 12th to get 1 hour is equal to 4. And because the context of the equation said how many additional hours, that would be 4 additional hours. So 1 hour plus 4 hours is a total of 5 hours. So again, paying attention to the context of the problem. What answer do we need? Well, we need to figure out it's four additional hours, but to answer the complete question, it's five hours total. So how can a tape diagram be used to model this problem? Well, a tape diagram can be set up to show each hour and the cost associated with that hour. The total is known, so the sum can be calculated of each column and the tape diagram until the total is obtained. So almost like guess and check. So has a tape diagram for this problem similar to the tape diagrams used in the previous activity. Well, in all the problems, the total was given. And how is the tape diagram for this problem different than the tape diagrams we used in the other activity? Well, in the previous activity, we knew how many units there were, such as days, hours, people, etc. What was attained was the amount for one of those units. But in this last tape diagram, we don't know how many units there are, but rather how much each unit represents. Therefore, to solve, we calculate the sum and increase the number of units until we obtain the given sum. So to summarize, how does modeling the sequence of operations with a tape diagram help to solve the same problem algebraically? Well, tape diagrams can be used to model and identify the sequence of operations to find a solution algebraically. And the goal in solving equations algebraically is to isolate the variable. So what are the mathematical properties and how are they used in finding the solution of a linear equation containing parentheses? Well, the process of undoing this requires or the process of doing this requires undoing addition or subtraction to obtain a zero and undoing multiplication or division to obtain a one. The additive inverse and the multiplica multiplicative inverse properties are applied to get the zero, the additive identity, and one, the multiplicative identity. 
Then the addition and multiplication properties of equality are applied because in an equation, if A is equal to B, when a number is added or multiplied to both sides, the resulting sum or product remains equal. All right, we'll see you in class.